So around, uh, I want to call it 2017, 2018, um, I feel I had gone very far in studying history, but I always felt that there were gaps, right? That things that weren't necessarily explained in a logical way, right? One of the big ones that made me really start thinking um, about taking some of these things that have been floating around in my life more seriously was in, when I was studying the Haitian Revolution. Right. And the role that our um, African spirituality and African, I call it African sciences, had in making that a success, especially consider the odds that the Haitians were against. They were fighting the French, uh, who were at the time the world's most powerful military. We've all heard of Napoleon. Right. Uh, they defeated Napoleon, I want to say, two to three times uh, consecutively and so forth. So I was like, okay, how do people go from being enslaved to immediately, and I mean, just building these very advanced fortifications um, with uh, African architecture and um, being able to just muster the courage to do that, right? And so I started looking more into it, but I was initially looking into it in the sense of, you know, like a researcher, like, okay, I want to know the ups and downs of this and this and that. And you touch one thing and an entire world ex exposes itself and you go a little further and the entire world exposes itself. Next thing you know, you begin to see things um, in a different light, in a different light. And so the journey began from many different places. And when they all finally came together around the time I started the channel, I was in the process of writing a book. And I was like, I want to write a book and I want it, I want it to take place in, um, uh, the uh, older eras in Igbo land, right? I try to avoid the term pre-colonial. We need a better term, by the way. But um, uh, in the older ages of Igbo land, I want to take these then. And so that, that intensifies my interest, intensifies my interest. And after a series of dreams and things like that, I now come to this place where I'm saying, okay, this is, this is, actually, this is actually the truth, right? This is actually what's going on. I begin incorporating it into my own life. And I begin seeing major differences clarity and things like that um and then i just kept growing from there um so i have been growing with the channel but the thing that brought me there came from many different directions thank you so much for that this is a highly uh, important um uh, project the one that they are working on and because a lot of um, africans and not only african diaspora at this time because when you don't look at this case you don't yet understand it but when you begin to look at them, like you said, you begin to see them that each of them is actually connected. And when you start to look at also the, the, the um, I don't want to say the deficiency or the deficit that we have in terms of understanding our history, you see that that is, is deeply rooted. Yes. And the consequences also is deeply rooted because it affects everything we do. It affects the way we shape our society. Uh, gradually, gradually, more and more people are losing track of their of their of their ancestral land, of where they are coming from, of right. the composition of the society, of what it means to be African, what it means to be from Africa. So, in a time like this, it is very important that we have people who are coming out to look at it, to to help the people to look at the same reality again. It's not. It's not. It's not that it is presented, it's different from that. We need more eyes that are interested in understanding African history. Yeah. This is very important. Also because, like I, like I continuously say in this podcast, nobody is coming from anywhere to do this work for us. And this yes. work I'm referring to is tedious. It's very hard. It requires a lot of time. It requires also a lot of resources. We don't have the resources, but we do have the time. Yes. With with the blessing of our ancestors, we'll be able to retrace our step. But it is a hard, hard job. All right. You know, yeah, one please of the go. Things too, one of the paradigm shifts I had around the time that I that I was just before I started the channel is I came to realize that everybody has, you know, not realize, but you know, the incorporate that as a fact, right, in my own life. That everybody has what our ancestors call a chi, right? And your chi brings you into the world for a specific purpose, right? And one of the ways to know what that purpose is are the things you complain about. 
if there is something about the world that you are constantly bothered by, right? If you're bothered by or you that type of thing, you're actually supposed to be the person who addresses that thing. Unless you want to just go through the world and have this itch and nobody itching it and asking, why is nobody itching my neck? That kind of thing. Why is nobody itching my arm? That kind of thing. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this to say, um, to add on to what you said previously about how we are the ones who have to do this work, right? Because many of us will say, oh, our language is dying. Our culture is dying. People are disconnecting this and this and that. But the people, a lot of the people saying these things have little traces of that thing in themselves that they can share with others or they can work towards preserving or they can work towards advancing right we see this a lot at home you know okay the government's not doing this the government's not doing that okay fine the government's never going to do it right but it bothers you so maybe you're the one who's supposed to do the thing right and i think one of the things we often do is we um intimidate ourselves um we intimidate ourselves without reason right so um i call myself a researcher i'm not backed by any university i'm not you know that type of thing i'm just a person with who has done the work in a very intense way and anybody who has researched this topic can sit down with me and um you know I'll, i can teach them something about it right that kind of thing there's no um I'm, I'm i didn't run away from that title right because i didn't say oh, okay this is supposed to be in the hands of the professionals there's nothing that there's no uh, additional fingers that the professionals or the others have that i don't have right so i'm going to go ahead and do the work and present what I need to present and that kind of thing. Um, and this goes for as far as everything, as far as our culture goes, you know, a lot of, we know there's a problem. We know that there are many problems coming in many different directions. And the ones that itch us the most, it is us, we are the person who's supposed to do that thing. You know, um, we, the, one of the ways I refer to this is there's this infantilizing we do of ourselves. Right. We do it infantilizing where we constantly believe there's supposed to be a parent that's going to fix any issue that bothers us. So we are we then create the situation where we're proud to cry or we're proud to complain or we're proud to point out the issue. If I go online and I say this thing is bad, that's got done a good enough job. I've cried. The bottle's coming soon. Right. Um, but what I came to learn is that those things that bother you, you're the one who's supposed to address them those things that you feel are wrong and many of us know that our languages languages you know are in danger many of us know that our culture is in danger and i my evil is my evil my evil is not is not at any place i want it to be right i'm constantly working on improving it but if I, had i said let me wait till somebody who speaks better evil starts this online school it wouldn't be here because I started this not because I feel that I'm the expert on the language. It's because this is something I wanted to see in the world. That's something I wanted to have in the world when I was younger so that I can go there and learn, you know? And so I said, you, you know, what, what is even funny about it is that uh, just to add to what you're saying there, you know, because some people really do think that the expert are going to do the work. Yes. And what we come to understand that the expert are not really interested in doing the work because they have other things that they want to do. Yes. So I come to believe that it is he who is ready to do the work that will really do it. You don't need to be expert to start it. Yes. You just need to really have the fire burning in you that you want to do it. Do it with the strength that you have, with the ability that you have, of course, with the intention to grow, learning to improve in it. Because if we are waiting for the expert, ah, okay, the university professors will do it, it will not be done. Because remember that what they are defending is not, might not necessarily be the same thing that you are defending. But if they happen to be the one to do it, it would have been better. But they are never going to do it because that is not their objective. Sometimes, not in all the cases, but sometimes. So I think all of us must ask ourselves where I am today, right now, with the capacity that I have. With the knowledge that I know, what can I do at this moment? Yes. If you say, ah, okay, I'm not rich. You, you know, there are certain things that the rich people can do. That is for them. There are things that the poor people can do, if I want to use that word like that. There are those people that are flying in the, in the air. They don't do the things that are those that are working on the ground can do. Yes. yes. But those flying in the air rely also on what... Those that are, fly, are working on the on the grand camp. So all of us have a role, have a stake in this.